Okay guys, today we're doing something a little bit different than I normally do. I got a Spirit here. It is a Jinma 254XL. This has a two-stage clutch and the clutch is slipping on it. Um, I talked to my brother-in-law, give me a few pointers, so I'm going to try to tackle this. It looks like there's an adjustment on the pedal here, and there is, but uh, as he has told me, that's just for height or to, to raise or drop the pedal only. Um, we're actually going to take this entire part with the bucket, dis, uh, disasse not disassemble it, but take it off and back the tractor away from it. Because it looks like where this arm goes down here and here, behind these bolts is where the adjustment is on this two-stage clutch. There's two different types of this uh, type of tractor. One of them has a single stage, the other one has a, a two-stage. This one's a two-stage, so hopefully that's what you need. If you need the other one, I can't help you because I don't know nothing about it. Honestly, I don't know nothing about this one either, but we are going to tackle it because uh, I didn't get the tractor in this shape and uh, now the clutch is slipping, so I need to return it in the shape that I got it in. So we're going to attempt to do this and hopefully we don't have to change the clutch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by removing this entire piece, but we are not going to take it off and I, I'm hoping that we don't have to remove it completely. I can just back away from it because I noticed the hoses here have some play. Um, and this assembly is going to stay, the, the, the knob to move the bucket up and down, side to side, whatever, dump, is, is attached to that arm, so that is going to stay with it. So pretty much what we're planning to do here is uh, just disconnect it from the tractor itself and pull backwards just a hair. It does move a little bit, so I should be able to pull it backwards a little bit. If not, we can hook a, a truck onto it and pull it backwards, about a foot I think is all we need. Um, but I did notice too on the lines that go down to the tractor are some quick disconnects right there Just like the air hose fittings, but they're for high pressure uh, uh, oil lines Or hydraulic fluid lines, so we can disconnect them there if we need to I have one here that I cannot disconnect because it's under pressure I mean I can if I have to but we're gonna try not to because this hose is extremely long So I got a feeling somebody planned ahead for this situation. So that's good. So again, it's a Genma 254 XL um, let's start off by removing, it looks like what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to remove these four bolts here. They look like a, I don't know, 19 millimeter or three quarter. And this arm here, let's see, yeah, and these two bolts here. But I'm going to put some jack stands or something underneath both sides here to keep this level. I'm actually going to go ahead and start it back up and lift the tires up just a hair, not to where they're off the ground but just a hair to relieve the pressure from this thing. So um, let's get started there. It looks like this, if we pull this pin, we can actually back away from it, but we're gonna have to pull these four bolts anyway on the other side. So actually, let me take that back. We're gonna go ahead and pull the pins and back out from underneath it first and see if we can get about a foot clearance. So let me give that a shot. Okay, so I tried rotating my bucket that way, I tried rotating it that way, I tried to get it under it to take the pressure off that pin. And then I happened to notice this nut right here. It was a inch and an eighth. All I did was crack it loose and the pin slid right out. So again, I'm learning this as we go as well. So if you guys have any pointers, please leave comments to help everybody else. But so far, all I did was just drop it and I put it level. I didn't get the tire off the ground. You can still see the weight on there. Um, but I, did, I just set it down level so there was no pressure on it. I cracked this loose and the pin came right out. And of course, on the back side of the pin, you've got a keeper that slides through the hole. So, so that we don't lose it, I'm going to go ahead and put that back in there and I'll stick it in a hole somewhere. So, we're going to do the same thing to the other side now. Okay, so I got both of those pins pulled. And now, my concern is that this is going to come down. I'm not sure. Again, I haven't done this before. I don't want it to fall. So, I put a chain up around the rafter there of the garage and I put a binder on it. And my idea behind the binder was just to keep it at that height when I have to come back into it. So I didn't, this side's loose, but my tension's here. Um, so I just got it tight. I, I could have went down another link or two, but I chose not to because I just want it to kind of hang right where it's at. Afterwards, if I have to put a jack up underneath it, I will. And uh, maybe you guys got some better ideas. Leave a comment if you do, I'd like to know. But, um, and who knows, I don't even know how it's gonna hang. I just don't want it to drop because those hoses are still attached. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull out real slowly. If my hoses start getting stretched, I'm going to go ahead and stop, and I'll disconnect those two lines. Okay, so I got it backed away. 
you can see almost a foot. The lines are not stretched at all. That's perfect. And one thing that I noticed, again, I've never done this before. These sleeves right here that these connect into, it's riding right on that. I didn't need my chain. I guess you can call it a safety chain now because I didn't really have to have it. So that is perfect. So now what we're going to attempt to do is if you look up underneath this peg, right there is two bolts. Hope you can see those. Let me move the camera. There's two bolts right there. One, two, we're gonna pull off. We're gonna pull off these two here, and we're gonna pull off these four here, and I'm gonna move this out of the way because I believe my adjustment's gonna be right behind that plate, as per my brother-in-law. So let's go ahead and pull those off. I'll use the impact. Hopefully you have one too. Make it a little bit quicker, and we'll see what's down inside that hole. Okay, so I got it pulled off here. This brace here, um, these two bolts and nuts, both sides were 15 16 The other two that come up from the bottom and these four were all uh, 7 8 So just wanted to make that clear with you. Now we can see down inside here and I'm gonna take a quick peek and see how we're gonna need to adjust this. Okay, I can already tell what we need to do here. We gotta get that feeler gauge back in here um, for that arm to uh, see what the distance is between the clutch. This arm actually pushes in the throw bearing, but um, I looked online and I found out that they're supposed to be set at 10 millimeters. Um, actually called uh, my brother-in-law as well, and he already had that information and gave it to me too. So we're gonna adjust it to 10 millimeters uh, distance away from the play with the clutch. This bolt here goes all the way through. You can see this this pitman arm here, this arm swings and pushes the throw out bearing in and out. I'm going to push the clutch in and you can see that throw out bearing moving. Uh, let's see. Right there. That bearing right back there is, is moving this direction when I push in the clutch. So um, essentially what needs to happen then is the distance between here needs to be bigger. So I need more play on that clutch. So that's where you're adjusting your 10 millimeter. You're going to crack this nut. That's just a nut. You're going to crack it counterclockwise and loosen it. And then you're going to back this bolt off until you reach your 10 millimeters. And then don't forget, this is not the only one. You're going to rotate the engine around. Give that a little spin. Don't worry about that one. That's a tensioner. There's another one right there. And you're going to do the same thing to that one. And then you're going to spin it around again and do the third one. There's three of them that you have to adjust. So let me go ahead and back these off real quick and adjust those at the 10 millimeter. Let me pull that back down where I can get at it nicely. Right about there. And uh, we'll adjust that at 10 millimeter and we'll give it a shot. Okay, so we are all adjusted at 10 millimeters. Now before I put all this back together, I want to try it too. So I can move back and forth a little bit. Um, actually thought we were going to have to pull the tractor in here. It literally would not move at all. I, it just barely crawled. So let's get her into first gear. Yep. Lock that in, make sure our compression release is good. We got glow plugs. They are heated. Alright, so moment of truth. I am going to go, looks like I'm going to go try it backwards because everything else is right there. Actually, no, I don't want that to slide off the pin. No, we're okay. We'll go forward first. Alright, shove it in the forward. That's it. And back. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. That's what I needed to see. All right. Well, that didn't take too long either. I'm probably into this maybe, I don't know, 35 minutes with making the video. You ought to be able to do it in 20. I take that back. Probably 45 minutes because I had to unbolt all that. So, But you should still be able to do it in 25, 30 minutes. I know if it needs done again, I'm going to knock this thing out in 20 minutes. Beautiful. No problem. And that's because I have an impact too. Hopefully you have one. Well, all right. So we figured it out. We know what to do. I hope this helps you out. If there's any comments you want to leave, please leave them to help people uh, know a better way, an easier way than what I did. We had to troubleshoot it. We had to do it ourselves. Had to get uh, the brother-in-law on the phone to get some information. Um, so hopefully this will help you to where you don't have to go through all that. And uh, if you have this little tractor, I hope you have it for years to come. Uh, we love it. Uh, unfortunately, I got to give it back to him now because, you know, we're done with it and uh, done ruining it. But thank God we got it fixed. Otherwise, we would have had to been tearing the engine apart with the tranny and putting a clutch in it. And again, that was my responsibility. You got to give things back the way you got them. So we're going to top off the fuel tank as well, put all this back together and give it back to him the way we got it. Plus a little. Maybe I'll clean it up too. 
Hope this helped you out. You guys have a good day.